Hello students, today we are going to learn about Chappie Impact Test and this is the second impact test that you will be learning in this material testing lab 1 and first one was ISO impact test. In both the impact tests we will be measuring the toughness of a given specimen to find out the impact strength. Now the aim of this particular experiment is also to find out the impact strength of the given specimen by conducting the experiment on uh, steel. Now the apparatus required for this experiment are the impact testing machine, specimen and screw gauge then you will be needing a hammer and some other minor instruments like a scale and a bench wise file etc. So the specimen used in this test is generally square in section with a V notch on the surface as shown. So while doing this in the lab, you have to cut the V-notch yourself. That is, you have to make a V-notch at the center of the specimen. That is, the specimen will be about uh, 75 centimeters in length or sometimes it's 50 centimeters in length. And you will be cutting a V-notch at the center. That is, if it is 75, it is, you have to cut it at 37.5 mm. And if it is 50 mm in length, you have to cut it at 25 mm. That is, at the center point, you have to make a V notch in this shape at an angle of 45 degree and 2 mm depth. Usually the specimen will be having a 10 mm square cross section. And the presence of the notch weakens the section so that under impact loading the breaking occurs at this section only. So we are providing this, this section or this V notch so that the breaking occurs at this section only. That is we are weakening a particular section so that we can make sure that the uh, specimen fails at this particular point only. Now the theory behind this experiment, the specimen is broken by subjecting it to a single stroke. The energy required to break the specimen is the difference between the initial and final energies of the hammer. That is, as you have seen in the previous experiment that is ISO test, we will be uh, rising the hammer to a certain height and from there we will be releasing it and from due to that releasing the energy stored in this uh, hammer that is the potential energy will be converted, to the, uh, converted as kinetic energy while it is hitting the specimen and it this kind of energy will be used to break the specimen and allow now let E1 and E2 be the initial and final energies of the impact pendulum given by E1 is equal to WH1 and E2 is equal to WH2 where W is weight of the pendulum that is equal to mass into uh, gravity or acceleration due to gravity and H1 and H2 are the heights above the ground at which the pendulum is at initial and final positions. Now let us see the figure this is a schematic representation of the releasing of the pendulum that is here this OA, OB and OC represents the length of the pendulum and OA is the initial position OB is the final uh, pendulum in vertical position and OC is the final position and if L is the length of the pendulum theta 1 and theta 2 are the angle made by the pendulum before and after impact of the previously then H1 is equal to L minus L cos theta 1 that is H1 here this H1 is equal to L. This is L and this is L cos theta 1. So L minus L cos theta 1 and H2 is equal to L minus L cos theta 2. It is this is theta 2 and this is cos L cos theta 2. So L minus L cos theta 2. Therefore E1 is equal to WL into that is that is W W into H1 and on, that is W into L into 1 minus cos theta 1 and E2 is W into L into 1 minus cos theta 2. And the energy absorbed by the specimen will be the difference between this E1 and E2 that is delta E is equal to E1 minus E2 that is 0 W L into 1 minus cos theta 1 minus W L into 1 minus cos theta 2. And simplifying this you will be getting the final equation as delta E is equal to W L into cos theta 2 minus cos theta 1. Now we will be finding out the notch impact strength that is the impact strength at the particular notch where we have provided. For the point where we have provided the notch, the impact strength I is calculated by using the equation I is equal to E by A, where E is the impact energy absorbed, that is the energy that will be or the value that will be obtaining from the machine, and A is the area of cross section of the specimen below the notch before the test. That is, before the test, we will be cutting the notch and we will be finding out the area of cross section at the notch provided using by taking the dimensions using a screw gauge or a vernier caliper. Now the procedure, first you have to secure the striker to the bottom of the hammer. 
and before performing the actual test you have to find out the frictional loss of the machine that is you have done the same during impact uh, iso test also by you have to find out the frictional loss that is at this point pointer with the point carrier to 300 joules that is a maximum reading or maximum value of energy that you can calculate using rp test apparatus and that 300 joule is a maximum energy when the pendulum is set to the initial position that is a, an angle at least to an angle initial angle of 141 degree 47 minutes so this 300 joules is a energy stored in the hammer when this hammer is hammer with the pendulum is uh, fixed to the or when it is locked at the initial angle that is theta is equal to 141 degree 47 minutes so to find out the frictional energy or frictional loss first you have to first you have to raise the hammer and latch it in at this initial position and then release the hammer by forcing the lever to the left so after releasing the pointer will indicate the energy loss due to friction and that you have to note down so that is energy loss due to friction or frictional loss from this reading confirm that the frictional loss is not exceeding 0.5 percentage of initial energy so initial energy it should be this loss should be within 0.5 percentage of initial energy now stop the hammer using the pendulum and place the pendulum back on support manually and latch it that is you have to <clears throat> again raise the pendulum and latch it in in the initial angle of 141 degree and 47 minutes and pick the specimen firmly on the supports or and will in simply support the position so that there is a main difference between isod and tarp test in isod you will be uh, using or you will be placing the specimen in uh, in cantilever support condition so that uh, support is only provided at the bottom or at one end here the specimen is supported on both ends or the simply supported position and the horizontal horizontal position in iso test the uh, specimen will be placed in the vertical position so and the blow of the hammer is opposite to the notch that is the specimen should be placed such a way that in such a way that the notch faces or the notch comes on the opposite side of the hammer now bring the pointer on dial to read 300 joules and release the hammer the hammer will strike the specimen and break it with the remaining energy the hammer will swing to the other side and the dial along with the pointer Now stop the hammer using the brake part and place the pendulum back on the support as before. Note down the energy loss. That is energy loss. You will be obtaining it from the uh, machine uh, or the point or the dial. Now remove the broken specimen and a calibration chart is plotted with energy loss on y-axis and angle of rise on x-axis. Knowing the impact value, the corresponding angle of rise can be obtained from the calibration chart. Now you have to repeat the test for three specimens now observations and calculations first the cross sectional area of the specimen at the notch should be calculated that is area you have to take find out the uh, if it is a square cross section you have cut down a notch at one particular section so you have to take the depth and width at that particular section to find out the cross sectional area now initial angle of the pendulum we know that is 141 degree 47 minutes and weight of the pendulum w is equal to dash kilogram into 9.8 then length of the pendulum l is equal to dash m all these readings you have to take before the experiment now observations and calculations energy absorbed by the specimen that is uh, the first test you have to be said you have to repeat the experiment three times so record energy first is record energy that is the energy obtained <clears throat> after breaking the specimen for first specimen we are right here then correction there's a frictional loss here so actual energy is record energy minus correction and actual energy divided by area of cross section is the impact strength and repeat that three times uh, now the calibration table here what we have to do is we have to write the angle of rise from 0 10 20 etc up to the in, uh, initial angle 141 degree 47 minutes and delta e is equal to wl into cos theta energy loss is delta e is equal to wl into cos theta to minus cos theta 1 that is theta 1 is 141 degree 47 minutes and cos theta 2 is 
0 10 20 30 40 etc so after that with that you have to find out delta e for each of these values okay sorry here cos theta 1 ah, okay cos theta 1 is 145 degree 45 minutes and cos theta 2 is this value 0 10 20 30 etc up to 141 degree 47 minutes so you have to find out the value of delta e for each of these values with theta 1 is equal to 141 degree 47 minutes now after that you have to plot a graph between angle of rise and energy loss now sample calculation you have to take any set and find out uh, do they do a sample calculation with initial angle equal to 141 degree final angle say any uh, to, uh, you don't have to take 20 itself you, have, you can take any value and show the sample calculation mass of the middle is this much then weight of the middle image 9.81 into the mass length of the pendulum this is a, a mass and length of the pendulum available in our lab now energy absorbed by the specimen is equal to from the equation after giving these values you can find out from the graph also you can find out the angle of rise corresponding to a particular value will be obtaining it from the graph now the impact strength is equal to impact value by area which is equal to dash and write it in joule per mm square And you will be plotting the graph between, as we have said earlier, the angle of rise and angle of rise and uh, angle of rise and the energy loss. And from the graph, the angle of corresponding to the energy loss, that is the value of energy that you obtained for a single specimen from the test. Using that value. You have to find out the angle of price from the graph.